All right, welcome back. I'm your host, Liam Douglas, the Aperture Assassin, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about my thoughts on the Fujifilm GFX 50R with the GF 50 millimeter lens. I've had this combination for a little over a year now. Absolutely love this camera and lens combination. The 50 millimeter on this medium format mirrorless is equivalent to a full frame camera, a 35 millimeter camera at 40 millimeters. So it's a good focal length to use for street photography which is one of the genres that I prefer, uh, that I love to shoot. Uh, years ago, I worked in downtown Atlanta for a company called Pier One Hosting, and uh, every day when I rode the bus to work and back, I used to take one of my DSLRs with me, and as I walked from the bus stop, you know, 10, 12 blocks to my office building in the morning, and then coming back in the evening to catch the bus home, I would always have my Canon DSLR with me and I would shoot street photography and sometimes I'd use my lunch hour to do that as well because it's a, a style of photography that I really enjoy. Now the GFX 50R is a fantastic camera. I absolutely love this camera. I am so glad that I bought it. Um, a lot of people complain because the frames per second are really slow on this camera. Um, but it's not a camera that's made for shooting sports or action. I don't know why people always piss and moan about medium format cameras being too slow in the frames per second count when they're not made for shooting sports. Now, the one thing that does, a couple of things that do kind of suck. Number one, it doesn't have GPS. I don't know why in God's name, Fuji will not put GPS in any of their cameras. It's like, okay, if you're trying to keep the cost down by not putting in a GPS chip, which I don't think they cost that much to begin with, and there's a truck coming behind me, so I apologize. Um, that's fine. At least put GPS communications in the communication stack so that I can put a freaking third party uh, hot shoe mountable uh, GPS unit on the top here and geotag my photos and videos that way. But no, they want you to use the Fuji Connect app on your smartphone, which is a total pain in the butt. Plus, it runs down the battery on your camera and on the phone at the same time. So I don't like that at all. The other thing that kind of sucks is they went with contrast detect autofocus in this camera, and I believe they also have it in its cousin, the 50S. You can correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments on the 50S. Contrast detect autofocus is not that spectacular. It's not great for use in low light, and uh, it's not great with any kind of movement. So again, it's not an action or sports camera. But this is a fantastic camera overall. I love the rangefinder style. I love the fact that the viewfinder is over here on the far left-hand side of the body. And I just overall enjoy, thoroughly enjoy shooting with this camera. So what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna do a little bit of ad hoc street photography. I'm gonna start off by capturing a shot of Sydney's AMF bowling lanes here in Woodstock. If I can get the entire building in the frame at 50 millimeters, I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to. And then we'll do a little bit of ad hoc street photography in the area while I'm waiting for my wife who's at a dental appointment. All right, so from this vantage point, I was able to just get the entire front of the building in the shot, which is great. I'm gonna go ahead and get just an open shot of the empty street going down here beside me. And like I said, I absolutely love this camera. This is a great combination for street photography, uh, being it's 40 millimeter equivalent, if you're talking a 35 millimeter camera, uh, this 50 millimeter lens is really great. It's an F3.5, which is supposed to be an F2.8 equivalent in 35 millimeter. I'm not sure I totally agree with that um, because it's not stellar in low light, uh, especially with the contrast detect autofocus, but I do absolutely enjoy shooting with this camera. Now, Fuji also makes the GFX 100, which is a 102 megapixel, medium format mirrorless camera. It's a much bigger camera. It's close to or about the same size as my old uh, Canon 1DX Mark II. It has a built-in vertical grip and holds two batteries. It does take the same battery as this, which is one of the nice things that Fuji did with their GFX cameras. All three models take the same battery, which is fantastic. A lot of times camera companies, as they release different models, they put different batteries 
batteries in them. Canon's been getting better about it when they released the uh, EOS R. It took the same battery as their 5D series, their 6D series, the 7D, the 80D, and uh, that was great. But when they released the RP, it took a little bitty teeny tiny battery, and I just didn't understand that. Now they did make up for that when they released the R5 and the R6 in the summer, this past summer of 2020. Both the R5 and the R6 take the same battery as those previous Canon cameras that I mentioned before. So the GFX100 is nice because it has built-in vertical grip. It can hold two batteries. It has phase detect autofocus as well as eye detect auto uh, phase autofocus and eye detect autofocus, which is phenomenal. But unfortunately, at a $10,000 price tag, I can't afford that camera right now. I would love to have one. I can't. I, I just can't put it put together the ten thousand dollars to blow on one right now. Now, rumor is on the twenty seventh of this month, January of twenty twenty one, Fuji is going to announce their next uh, GFX camera, which is supposed to be the GFX one hundred S. Now, the nice thing about the one hundred S is it's going to be smaller than the one hundred. It's actually going to be smaller than the fifty S by a little bit, and the reason for that is. Fuji was able to make their in-body image stabilization uh, assembly a lot smaller. That's one of the reasons why the GFX 100 body is so big and beefy is because their IBIS uh, mechanism, if you will, um, was considerably larger. They've now been able to shrink it down, make it smaller, more compact, and do the same job. They've got the smaller version in the X-T4, they've got it in the XS10, um, so they're gonna be doing that with the GFX 100S. Now, the other cool thing about the 100S is they're dropping the price by $4,000. The 100S is rumored to retail at $6,000 versus $10,000 for the current GFX 100. Now, whether or not Fuji will drop the price of the current GFX 100 when the S releases, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. If they do, that'd be great because I'd probably still pick up the GFX 100 over the 100S, depending on what kind of technology they have in the 100S. So I'd have to wait and see on that. All right, so I'm back once again. I actually have a person that's walking up the street here. I'm going to see if they'll give me the give me the okay to take a picture of them, uh, street photography style. We'll see, and if we can, I'll share that with you in this video. All right, so unfortunately that didn't work out. She didn't want me to take her picture, which it's understandable. Some people are uncomfortable with street photography. Um, it's still a genre that I that I absolutely love to do. Most people are okay with it, but every once in a while you'll run into somebody that's kind of uncomfortable with the whole idea, you know, of a stranger taking their picture. So it's understandable. Uh, we'll see if we can find another scene that we can shoot real quick here. All right, so unfortunately I couldn't find a person to photograph today for this YouTube video. Uh, it's just the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. But I'm gonna go ahead and get some casual shots out here with the lens that I'll share with you at the tail end of this video. And then we'll wrap up the video and I'll give you my final thoughts on the GFX 50R with the GF 50 millimeter F3.5 lens. Okay, so I did get to walk around here a little bit in Woodstock, Georgia and get some street photography style images. Like I said, I didn't get any people. I did manage to get some of the cars that are driving in and out of the area, as well as some of the various items around the area, signs and stuff like that. So we'll head back into the studio and we'll take a look at the images on the computer. Here are the images that I shot earlier today when my wife and I were in Woodstock. This is uh, Sydney's AMF bowling lanes in Woodstock. And uh, you can see the colors just turned out really nice in this image. Uh, this 50 millimeter lens is just fantastic. Uh, this is the street shot. And again, the colors just pop. They look really, really good. The details are really good. Um, even when you zoom in, there's lots of detail there. And let's see here. Uh, the shot I took of the tree there, just to get a little bit of the texture. And you can see, I mean, the texture that you get, the details and the texture is just insane with this camera and lens combination. Uh, this is the stop sign. And this is uh, the sweet sign for the uh, offices um, in the area where the dentist office is located. And I got these as well just because of the bright colors, the vibrant colors, the UPS, FedEx, and Postal Service boxes all together. And you don't see all three of them together very often. Um, and you can see the, I mean, even when you zoom in, look at the details and the bricks um, that you get there. I mean, it's just crazy. 
crazy how good the details are. And this was in fairly poor lighting conditions because it was really overcast while we were there. Um, and these images still turned out fabulous. I mean, the details and the colors are just phenomenal with this, with this setup. I mean, it's, there's no two ways about it. It is a fantastic setup. Now, when I get an opportunity, I may shoot another video on this camera lens combination where it's true street photography when I get an opportunity and the weather's better and I can go into maybe downtown Atlanta or something and just shoot people as they go about their, their work days and their lives. Uh, I got some shots of some of the cars coming in and out of the complex, uh, the industrial park where we were at. Um, another another shot of a tree in the area. And even some of the, uh, the, the foliage. Uh, the, I don't know what these are called. For, they look like ferns, kind of. Uh, but they're down at ground level. Um, but even here, I mean, really, really good detail. Um, considering it's not a macro lens, I mean, this is just a, a regular 50 millimeter lens. There's no macro capabilities to it at all. And these images turned out really, really good. I mean, really fantastic. The details and the color rendering and everything is just absolutely phenomenal. Now, before I wrap up this part, one of the other things I wanted to share real quick, I took these three images back over the summer when my wife and I were up home on vacation. Um, this here is a shot of one of our grandsons. Uh, this is Kendrick. Um, whoops. And he's up there on the slide. And of course, being he was moving, you know, this camera is not made for shooting sports and action, but it still turned out pretty. It's, the focus is a little bit off. It's not as tack sharp as I'd like. Uh, because he was moving, of course, this is his younger brother, uh, Jameson. Um, and the same issue, you know, he was moving, so... I didn't get super tack sharp focus, but I was just playing around with this camera lens combo. Um, and then this is their younger sister, Callie. Uh, she's the youngest of our grandkids. Um, now that portrait of her turned out fantastic because she was sitting still. Um, so I was able to get a really nice shot of her. Uh, but those are just some of the example images, both street style, a little bit of architecture and uh, portraits that I've captured with the GFX 50R and the GF 50 millimeter F 3.5 WR lens, uh, pancake lens, I guess, technically you could call it. That's what a lot of people refer to it as is the pancake lens because it is so small and compact. All right. So you got to see the example images that I captured today when we were in Woodstock, as well as some portraits of my grand, three of my grandkids that I captured over the summer when we were up north um, on vacation to uh, Pennsylvania and New York. Um, as I said earlier in this video, I absolutely love, I cannot stress that enough, the GFX 50R with the Fujinon GF 50 millimeter F3.5 WR pancake lens. It is a fabulous combination. It can be used for portraits. It can be used for street photography. Um, and as I mentioned in the previous segment, when I get an opportunity and the weather's better, I will take it out and do a true street photography video with it, you know, where I can get into downtown Atlanta or maybe Athens or one of the other large cities in, here in Georgia before we move and do some proper street photography on one of my days off, you know, catching regular folks as they're going about their day back and forth to work, to lunch and stuff like that. So I will definitely get some of those images and post another video down the road um, a little bit later on uh, into 2020 when we get more into the springtime weather. It gets a little bit warmer and a little bit nicer out. Um, sunnier day, so we, I have better lighting uh, because as I mentioned earlier in the video, the GFX 50R being its uh, contrast detect autofocus doesn't work the greatest in weak lighting. Um, but, you know, again, like I said, this is a medium format mirrorless camera. Uh, it's not made for low light performance. It's not made for sports and action. Um, it's made more for landscapes, street photography, portraits, you know, product photography and stuff like that. Uh, that's where it shines. Now, again, I wish it had 
the features of the GFX 100. I wish it had the face detect autofocus. I wish it had the eye detect autofocus. It does have face detect autofocus, but it doesn't have eye detect autofocus. But then again, if it had those additional technologies, it would have probably been a lot more expensive in price. Now, when the GFX 50R first came out, it retailed for $4,500. Uh, which isn't bad. I, I know it's still a lot of money, but it's a pretty good deal for a medium format mirrorless camera, no doubt about that, especially when you consider the GFX 50 or 100 uh, GFX 100 cost $10,000 new, and the uh, the uh, Hasselblad X1D uh, Mark II, uh, when that first released, was $10,000 as well. It has since dropped to $5,700 which is a little more affordable, but still when you factor in the, the more expensive uh, Hasselblad lenses, that's why I opted to go with Fujifilm. I've shot Fujifilm off and on for many, many of the 30 years that I've done photography. Um, I've been primarily a Canon shooter, but I have shot a lot with Fuji cameras in the past as well. And I decided to get back into Fuji um, when I started looking at getting a medium format system uh, just because the Phase 1 and the Hasselblads, they're just so, so expensive. Uh, you know, the camera systems are super expensive. The lenses are super expensive. This was just a more practical way to get into medium format and skip medium format film and go right into medium format mirrorless, which is where I would rather be anyways, to be honest. So that is going to wrap up this video. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this. Please remember to like and subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell icon so you can be notified when the next video drops. And I will see you next time.